Hello, welcome back to X-Plane 11. Thank you very much for joining me in this video. And today, as the title suggests of the video, we are going to be going in depth and having a look at how to set up our controls on X-Plane. So as you can see right now, I am in my trusty Piper Arrow, but as you can see, all my controls are a little bit awkward right now. I'm barely moving. That is me hardly moving the control sticks and it's all gone rather strange so what we're going to be doing in this video is I'm going to show you how to get these controls set up in a better fashion and I'm going to be demonstrating what it's like by actually taking each one off for a bit of a flight so we'll sort out a little bit we'll take off I'll be able to show you what the response is doing what the response curves are doing uh, which is which is new in X-Plane 11.3 and that's going to be the focus of this video and also maybe we might use a little bit of uh, deadening so make sure you stay tuned for I'd say this is going to take about half an hour for that okay so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the aircraft off like this. Now, if we have a look at my controls currently, uh, on my Cytec X52 Pro, that's what I've got. I have got my roll pulling back and forward, my ailerons, sorry, my roll uh, left and right, my pitch back and forward. So ailerons is like that, elevators like that, and my rudder is twisting it left and right. I don't have anything connected as foot pedals or anything like that. So, we'll also notice if you go to my control sensitivity, everything is at zero. So this is completely at zero. There are no response curves, nothing like that. Now I'm going to take this aircraft off and we're going to do a little bit of a fly around out from Echo Golf Bravo Bravo, that's Birmingham Airport. And I'm just going to give you my thoughts on where I feel this aircraft is or where my controls are lacking on this aircraft. So here we go, flaps down one stage. I don't have head tracking. I don't have any of that right now. I'm going to move this back uh, like this so you guys can see this a little bit more. Throstle max. That's max. Fuel pump on. Pitot heat on. Um, instrument lighting on. Alright, and here we go. I'll move the mouse out the way. Where do I, can I put the mouse? I can put the mouse in the corner. There we go. Now, bringing the throttles up isn't a problem. And we are up. Positive rate. Flaps in. And let's try and stabilize ourselves. So what my notice is here is that the pitch axis is pretty sensitive. Roll axis is also sensitive. I mean, you can see that is very minimal movement on my on my control stick. That is absolute minimal movement right now. So let's try a turn. Let's try a correctly banked turn. Let's see how well this goes. Admittedly, I'm not doing too badly on this turn. Bring it around nicely. Our vertical speed did drop momentarily. But we're not doing too badly at all. then the vertical speed jumps up quite significantly. 
can always bring that pitch there all right so I find that the pitch control is a little bit awkward so let's level ourselves off here let's see if we can level ourselves off there we go nose down nicely let's see what speed we get there we go I think we're fairly good right so let's have a look at the movement on this now that's not me moving it fully so that's about 50% movement on the control this is 100% And that's not me being that's not me moving it suddenly you'll see there it is a gentle movement okay this is my yaw almost dutch rolling it so the yaw seems fine i, I don't seem to have a problem with the yaw at all even in this con current configuration however the pitch let's find out what happens with the pitch so nose down nose up that was me pushing about 40% let's do a more severe one let's do a hundred percent nose down just for a few seconds hundred percent nose down 100% nose up so you can see there it is a little bit iffy um, it's, a, it's hard, it's not that easy to control personally I find this a little bit too much and I find these small movements on the control stick just a little bit too um, difficult I should say so what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the controls so here we go so we'll go over to this and we're going to do some adjustments on the control so what I'm going to do is this time sometimes would add some of this stability augmentation and stuff like that I am not going to add any of this in this is how I was doing it before um, as you can see these sliders allow you to get more joystick resolution when your controls are near the center of travel so that's that makes it harder um what i am going to do is i'm going to add in a response curve on the roll so i just press the add response curve button now upon adding that we've got some interpolation mode so you'll see there uh catamal rom linear or cubic so i'm going to go for i'm going to leave it as it is and it puts one in already for us so you can see here what it's done I'll explain this as it goes um, it's got one at 50 50 let's get rid of the 50 50 one right now and let's bring it to linear okay so you get to see this in fact I suppose we could put the 50 50 in uh, 50 50 there you go linear is not going to make a difference if we have a look at this this green line is our movement that is how our movement is going to be translated this line here or this line whichever one you want whichever one you want to take is the input or the output to the actual sim so that's the output to the sim so let's say for example this one here is the output to the sim and this purple the x-axis here uh, with the purple line is the input from your control so at the moment what this is saying is that this is a one to one ratio so that means that if you have 10% movement on your uh, what are we doing roll axis if you have 10% movement on your roll axis it's going to give you 10% movement um, or 10% of the total deflection of the aileron in whichever direction you're pressing or pushing on the sim so if you go to 20 percent 
it's going to go to 20, 30%, 40%, keep pushing it. So at this point, we're at 50%. So you can see here that that says 50 to 50. So that means I have a 50% deflection on my input. So I'm 50% the way through its travel. And in the sim, it is deflecting the ailerons 50% of their maximum deflection all the way over to 100%. Now, you've probably already noticed the problem is that I it's very difficult for me to just do 10% deflection. It's actually quite hard. And then it's much harder for me. The first this much is okay. All right, I can deal with that. This area is a lot harder. I can't seem to steadily gets between 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 it just it's very hard for me to try and bring it just to that point there 0 0.25 okay I turn it I put a little bit extra force in and 0 0.3 0 0.32 0 0.33 0 0.39 0 0.33 0 0.35 that's me trying to put the same amount of force in every single time but I'm not putting the same amount of force in because my controls are not... Um, it doesn't take a lot of force to move my controls. I can move it with one little finger. I can move up to 0 0.5 with one finger. Oh, wait a minute, there you go. In fact, that's one finger all the way up to full, full tilt. So, if I can do that with one finger, that means that it's going to be much harder for me to keep a very gentle move so a very smooth turn you can see here as I'm pushing up it's not very smooth because I'm having to hold back on the force that's being applied so I'm not it's not very smooth and that's where this response curve comes in so for example if we then switch this over to that now you're going to notice here if I can I make this bigger no I can't uh, unfortunate if I go to 50 50 that says if we go to 50 50 it's going to be 50% uh, to 50% there you go so the middle point the midpoint is exactly as it is 1 is 1 and 0 is 0 however if you now have a look at this and this is where we we'll, We'll figure out which axis is actually which. Um, which axis is which? Let's find out. I'll put this to 10 and I'm going to hold that at 10. There we go. Okay, so the x axis is our input. So we, we're good there. That's our input from our controller. Now you'll notice that at 10%, it only gives a 7% deflection on the roll. At 20%, it's only, what is it, 16, I think? See, I can't even get the 20. Uh, it's about 16. Yep, 16. So 20 ma maps to 16. 30 maps to 27. 40. 40 maps to about 40 so you can see there it clears itself up and then at the top of the range let's go up here can I click on these no I can't if we go back up to the top of the range you'll notice that now our input of 90 is actually 93 so it's more 90% on the controller is 93% deflection on the actual aileron so at the start it's less and at the end it's more so let's leave that one as it is let's leave that one and let's add a response curve to pitch as well it's got the exact same response curve on the pitch one so there we go so we'll start with the same response curve as i said i don't need one on your i don't have a problem with your as you can see i can move i can roll and i can pitch and it doesn't have any effect on the yaw at all but you can see that when I'm pitching 
sometimes there is a slight movement on the on the roll. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but there is sometimes a very there we, there we go that slight movement there. So we're looking to fix that. So if we now do that, and now that movement is somewhat less. When you go to this point, yes, it's exactly the same. At that point, it's exactly the same. But at these points, it feels smoother. So that response curve has been changed. So the aircraft runs smoother, quite simply. Also, uh, I feel like we're not in a good... Okay, so the aircraft is now turning smoother and I guess I should be able to pitch it smoother and I can, there you go. But of course if I go too far it hits the sort of the limit where it gets to 100% there is a point where it's higher than what you're giving it and the same will go for the roll so we're okay here this is nice and gentle this is nice and gentle you get past this point that one is a bad idea to do that over Birmingham City might be better to do it over the hospital that's the hospital there maybe we should just do it over the hospital um, but on a serious note, it just helps us with more control. Now, what do I what do I want on this? I want to actually really deaden the first few percent. So I'm going to go back into this. I'll go over to the roll curves and I really want to deaden this. So all we've got to do for that is we use these plus keys. So depends on where we want it. If we want it after the 0 0.5, we press the plus there. If we want it before the 0 0.5 or after the 0 is the correct way to say that, so we press the plus there. So there we go. Now we've got one here. Now I'm going to drag that one right the way down. And as you can see here, I can technically create a dead zone. You see, that's an entire dead zone for me. Or I could... add it in and smooth it up. Now if you have a look at that, that's not helpful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to cubic like that and I'm going to bring this down so that my initial input up to about 0 0.5 has negligible turning force on an aircraft okay similarly up here I'm going to I don't mind all of this I don't mind all of this but I am going to just crank this like that so now if we look at 50 it's slightly less all the way it's slightly less now here it goes up somewhat so I could solve this by bringing that down. There we go. So now what we're looking at is everything is just slightly less all the way along. And it's just this part here where we actually do get some turning. And then right at the top we do have a little bit of a balloon, but only at the last on only on the last three or four percent. On the pitch, I want a similar similar sort of thing. So I'm going to go to cubic. I'm going to add this in, and by no means am I saying that this is the perfect way to do it. It probably isn't. And I'm going to add just a little bit there, so that when I'm pitching up, the first very little movements just at the start don't do much. Just at the start, I'll say how much movement up to there so give it a little bit more like that there we go
Alright, now let's have a look. And now we've got an incredibly, incredibly stable flight. I'm actually able to control this aircraft very easily now. So that has changed everything for me. So now let's fly around with this for a while and let me let me see if I can explain the differences that I'm that I'm feeling. So the first thing is turning the aircraft. Let's uh, let's do a full 30 degree turn on this aircraft. We're going to try and hold 2200 now. I don't know how this is going to pan out, so we're going to see what happens. All right, we are descending. But we have regained control. And I am going to continue flying around. I'm going to continue flying around in a circle. Until I can figure this out, we're going around in a circle. Alright. And I think... Do we just about have it? I'm here going around in a circle and the aircraft is fairly stable. Okay, admittedly we didn't manage to hold the 2-2. Alright, let's straighten ourselves out. And let's try and keep that vertical speed towards the zero. And we managed it. Now, the slight movements that I am making right now to control the pitch, I could not do before uh, the response curves. So let's now turn in this direction. And look at that. Almost, almost perfect. We've got a 30 degree bank going on. We're coordinated on it and our rate of climb is pretty much zero. That's something that's obviously in a real aircraft that can be done. Let's uh, straighten ourselves up. Obviously you can do it in a real aircraft, but to be able to do it in a sim very easily, just like you would expect in a real aircraft, is brilliant. And again, you saw as I came out of the turn, it didn't the vertical speed didn't balloon up because I could control I could control my elevator so much more with that finer movement. Uh, at the start that it didn't just do this as I came out of the tent because that is what we used to get in X-Play and that was one of the big problems so alright let's uh, end this video by heading back towards the airport I don't need a 30 degree turn here so let's head, head back towards the airport and um, land this aircraft. So the airport is which way? I think the airport is around this way. I 
It's around this way somewhere. But again, that those smooth characteristics that I'm now getting to experience just makes it so much nicer. Uh, let me see. Let me see. That there, that there, that there. The airport is there. Right? Just there, somewhere? Hold on, that, that's the M6, so the airport is here. Is that it? Oh boy. We'll find the airport. We will we will find it. Now. Let's have a look. See again, even those movements now to straighten the aircraft, it's no longer a violent turn. Okay, maybe that was a bit too violent, uh, as opposed to what used to happen. But this, just a gentle turn, and it feels much more one-to-one -one here. Even though I know it's not actually one-to-one. -one. As soon as we get the airport in sight, we'll, uh, we'll prepare for a landing. Let me think. Where are we? Airport's here. There it is. I was just following the M6 around. Alright, so, let's join in a circuit for the airport. At this altitude. Again, now I can say at this altitude and I can keep this altitude. And that's really awesome that I can actually do that. We're going to be landing on runway 33 today. I don't know what runway, I think we took, what runway did we take off on? 15? I wasn't actually looking. But we'll, we'll land on runway 33, which is that direction. And hopefully this, this has given you guys a, an insight and an understanding uh, of the... of this new response curves and how to set it up properly and how, what to expect from it. So for me, this is, this is really nice now. I, I can enjoy flying in X-Plane all the time with this kind of setup. And maybe for different aircraft, it might be different for, you know, for a fast jet or something like that. We might need to dull down the pitch a little bit more. For example, for the Hawk T1A from Just Flight, we might need to tone that down further uh, than this one. Um, let's see what we've got. Let's do that. Perfect. Now, I'm not always great at landing this aircraft, so you're going to have to excuse me, and we're not using the ILS today either. So it, it is going to be interesting as we, as we bring this aircraft in. In fact, I guess I could use the ILS because we have Avitab. If you want to know how to sort this out, do watch another video. I've got a video explaining an installation. There's a full explanation of the installation for Avitab. Uh, 
um, one one zero point one. Lovely. And that awesome. Let's see what we get. Beautiful, beautiful scenery, by the way, from Orbex. Fantastic stuff. And really good on frames, too. Here we go. Turn on to a base leg and start descending. Now let's see what, what this aircraft's like to fly in a landing. What are you complaining about? It wants my gear out already, doesn't it? Uh, I do not like it when it does that. Okay. Um, fine. 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 There you go. Happy? Look, it even made me miss my... Silly thing made me miss my turn. Look at that. Look how how far we missed it because of the stupid thing constantly screaming at us. Uh, what we're going to do though is we are going to keep this descent going. And we are going to lower the landing gear because it won't stop, stop complaining. We are very high. But I can sort that out. You know, I genuinely don't know what that noise is for now. I've got my flaps down, maybe because the speed is just too low, but 70 knots is good. I wanted an 80 knot approach, but that's okay. Now in terms of feeling this aircraft now, with this new response curve, now obviously it doesn't drop as easily, we can't pitch the nose down as easily, so I am finding that to be something different. On the other hand, it's so much easier to bring it in for this final approach, you see? As we're bringing it in like this, it's so much easier. Also, I have never seen that road that busy. Just, just pointing that out. Here we go. Look at that lineup. That's wonderful. And it's so easy now to do that. Or should I say so much easier? Massive displaced threshold here. Can throw you off a little bit. And now we don't need the lights anymore. 
we just bring this aircraft in ourselves as we want. Lovely, and that was actually really easy. Where I, where I will say I struggled just a little bit. Um, is that my brakes? Which one's my brakes? That one's my brakes. There we go. Where I will say I struggled a little bit would be uh, just at the end. I was expecting a lot more movement than I had and I was moving a little bit because I'm so used to it being incredibly sensitive. However, what I am going to say is that this felt more like a real aircraft or from what I experienced and what I know of real aircraft, the movement required to move one of these. Uh, it felt more like a real sim, as in a motion sim. If, um, you know, the level D ones, the ones that pilots train on, the finer movements it wasn't that i needed to yank it back like this or push it forward like this i just needed those slight movements a little bit here a little bit there and i could do that with these response curves so that is why they are really good thank you very much for watching please remember to hit the like button if you like this video subscribe to the channel for more videos on x-plane 11 some cool stuff coming up Leave a comment in the comments box below letting me know what you think and don't forget to support me on Patreon www.patreon.com slash ecgadget your support would be massively massively appreciated it would really really help me out also you can find me on Twitch www.twitch.tv slash ecgadget and you'll find me on social media at ecgadgetlp for both Twitter and Instagram that's all from me and I'll see you guys next time in X-Plane 11, if I can switch these off, there we go, right, yeah, I'll see you guys next time in X-Plane 11, United 747 at Birmingham Airport, unheard of. <laughs>